Thanks for watching The Personal History of Games. I'm your host, Eric Canius. This week, I was lucky enough to chat with Melissa Coleman, a character artist at Insomniac Games. You can find her work in Spider-Man Miles Morales and the upcoming Ratchet & Clank with many more titles to come. This week, we're playing Animal Crossing for the GameCube as we get Melissa's experiences with everything from rotisserie chickens to Kingdom Hearts as we hear her personal history of games. Here's that conversation. I just realized this table here, it's just two floating planes. It's not even a full, <laughs> like, cylinder. So you see, like, if you go to the side, you see how it's, uh, how the edge just kind of falls off? Not yeah. this angle. Come oh, closer. Yeah, yeah, I see. I think I see what you mean. I, I don't know where else to go. Uh, yeah, to wow, that's it. crazy. It's just the illusion of a cylinder, but it's just two floating planes. Yeah, I see what you mean now. That's Weird. crazy. I would I would have never noticed that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I would have either. I just happened to. You can tell if you go to the right, you can probably tell a little bit better. You see that on the left edge? Yeah, of it? you can see the yeah. disconnect. It doesn't go two, down. Yeah. <laughs> How fun. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you got to save those polygons. Exactly. That's why I, I really like old games because you just have to be so uh, conservative with all your your triangle count and stuff. So they have to get stupid creative. <laughs> yeah, incredibly efficient. Yeah. But yeah, we're here oh, in Animal Crossing. Winter time. And it's winter time, yeah. How pleasant. <laughs> it's probably not snow where you are. No, I don't think it ever does that. Yeah, we just got uh, a foot of snow last week. Oh my god. Oh my god, is our town called Costco? Oh yeah, I call my town Costco. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> and my character's name is Tuba. Five dollar rotisseries. <laughs> Gotta get those cheap hot dogs. Yes. These graphics held up so well. Well, this is an emulator <laughs> running at 1080, so. Well, I mean, like, even just, like, the, the way that it, like, the textures and everything like that. Yeah, like, it scaled pretty well. Yeah. I don't know, like, it still looks cute. It's still charming. Definitely. Like, the style kept. You yeah. Know, you upscale it. Some of the older games, they don't look so pretty. <laughs> but. No. So what brought Animal Crossing to mind? When I ask, so for the people listening, when I uh, ask uh, guests, I get them to suggest like one game and the platform it was on for us to play. Uh, so what brought Animal Crossing for the GameCube to mind? Oh, it, I'm not gonna lie, it was really hard. I had to, to consult a few people to try and figure <laughs> it out. There is a, a bunch of very nostalgic games as is tradition, but I think Animal Crossing, for me, it's the most nostalgic because uh, GameCube was my first console. I had handhelds up until then, but uh, the GameCube itself was the first console I had. And Animal Crossing was the only game I had for it. And some like <laughs> McDonald's Mario Sunshine demo that I kept playing over and over for some reason, because that's just what children do. <laughs> oh no. Oh, you don't even have a net either. Yeah, you're screwed, man. <laughs> no. There's no hope. <laughs> God, that's um, so much scarier than I remember. <laughs> they like yeah, really slash at you. <laughs> that really got me. Yeah. So I only had two games. And <laughs> so I played the <laughs> shit out of Animal Crossing. And the good thing about Animal Crossing is that it's just a game that never ends. So you True. come home after school. There's always something to do. <laughs> uh, I was also like super weird as a kid. I still am, but now I'm a super weird <laughs> adult. So I didn't have a lot of friends, and I just moved to a new area, so for like a while, video games were the only friend I had, which was just yeah. fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I was in a similar situation. Yeah, I, I feel like most people who are like way too into video games kind of have that same, like, <laughs> I couldn't make friends in real life, so I just made friends with characters that <laughs> didn't exist, <laughs> and I don't see anything wrong with that. I mean, they could, they could be bad influences too, but not Animal Crossing for sure. They'll be no. very nice. Oops. Oh, check that out. Oh, sweet. Huh, that was weird. I said, check that out. Just check it out. <laughs> Maybe I remember <laughs> it too well. Yep, it's, it has changed the way you speak. <laughs> yeah. That money bag uh. looks real gross. <laughs> Just the shape of it. <laughs> Yes, and also I don't know why they give you an it money bags when it just goes into your wallet. I don't know. That's the good thing about the newer games. They they figured it out. There's no need for yep. that. The Gosh. inventory is so small too. Yes, it is uh, brutal. <laughs> and then when you collect peaches or whatever fruit you have, like you run out of space immediately. Yeah, what fruit does our town nothing. have? This is a peach town. Oh hell yeah! I'm not yeah. gonna lie. I will reset my town every 
Like as much <laughs> as it takes to get peaches. My current Animal Crossing town for New Horizons has peaches. Ooh. It's the best fruit. It's butt fruit. <laughs> yes, yeah, it's very uh, promiscuously shaped. <laughs> Can you paint a picture? What's like the the quintessential picture you think in your mind when you're playing Animal Crossing of like the the household and the, the space you're in? Oh, that's a great question. Oh, I've never thought about that. So I guess it's just me in my room and it's probably after school or something like that and just in front of my TV on the floor. I don't think I had a gaming chair or anything. Just crisscross applesauce playing Animal Crossing. You had a TV in your own room? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I had that's, a little that's probably the shit like right a there. big chunky CRTV. Yeah, that's that's golden. When we yeah. when I finally got a TV in my room after we got like an extra TV yeah. and I claimed it for my room, I was like, oh, thank God. Yeah, I don't think I left my room very often growing up. <laughs> Which I think, I don't know, that's what kids do, right? Yeah, I mean, it's either you spend all day outside or you spend all day in your room. Yeah, and I know I'm not going outside. (laughs) Exactly. Only one thing left to do. I just just bought a longboard. uh, One of the most uncoordinated going on 30 women like in the (laughs) world bought a longboard. It should be shipped today, and I'm terrified. I'm pretty sure I'm just going to... Am I allowed to cuss on this, by the way? Yep. (laughs) Eat shit. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, How long have you been living in LA for, then? About a year and a half-ish or so. so It's about about the time to get a longboard, then. (laughs) Pretty much, yeah. After (laughs) Rocket Power told me, like, when you move to California, you have to learn how to do sports. (laughs) Of course. It's hard to come to terms with. But, oh, wait, what's that sign by the dock? Oops. I don't remember Ugh. that. It is. Connect your Game Boy Advance to turn on. Oh, cabin. I guess this is a later thing. I don't know if I had that. I don't know. All their weird crossplay stuff. I also didn't like connect internet to any of my consoles for like probably until like the PS3. <laughs> <laughs> Were you a Nintendo kid after well, with the GameCube, I guess? Uh, yeah. Uh, well, I had GameCube and then uh, eventually I got a PS2. So then I became a PlayStation kid. Nice. And then uh, then I had a computer, and so I was a PC kid, but I also just kept having Playstations. But I would usually play on PC. <laughs> That's where I am right now. I've yeah. past like 10 years. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like I have much. Playstations, all of them. But I'm just going to play on the computer. Mm-hmm. It's at the point now where I'm just at the computer so long all day for work <laughs> and like talking to people and stuff that I will get a game on console just to go sit somewhere else in the house. That's fair. <laughs> yes, I'm lucky enough to have a laptop where I'll just bring it to the living room and plug in the TV. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I haven't had a laptop in a while. I've got a big chunky desktop. Yeah, after college, I don't use a laptop anymore. <laughs> All right, so after Animal Crossing, what's what's like the next game you got then if you're stuck with Animal Crossing for so long? Uh, after that, th- mind you, I'm a child at this point. I had a, <laughs> <laughs> I had a Scooby-Doo, I think Night of 100 Frights is what it was called Ooh. for the PS2. That was awesome. It was a great game. <laughs> I thought about playing that um, just because like, I, I peeped at the graphics and they just look so shitty and it's kind of <laughs> hilarious. But I was like, I don't know if there's any emulators or anything like that out there. So I was like, Animal Crossing is easy to find and it's also yeah. the greatest game ever. So <laughs> Scooby-Doo game. It was great. And then after that, it was like, uh, I think this is when Kingdom Hearts came out. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> and then uh, this is also a time in my life where I actually had like made two friends, and they also really liked Kingdom Hearts. So it was just, oh, no. it was the coming of age teenage girls <laughs> playing Kingdom Hearts. Classic story. It's wonderful. Yeah, it's <laughs> mortifying, but it's also hilarious. I mean, it's like weird to think back on, but like at the time, it's a, it's a nice thing to kind of gather around especially i don't yeah. know i like interactive stuff more than like oh we're all listening to i don't know some 41 I don't even <laughs> but like we're all jamming out to avril lavigne i'd oh, rather yeah. be jamming out to a game seeing goofy say weird stuff yeah oh my god <laughs> and like uh we had it to where like growing up and stuff we would just get together and have the kingdom hearts cutscenes like compilations on youtube playing it's <laughs> eternal it's like five hours <laughs> worth of cutscenes. i don't know what the gameplay is and we would just have it like as we were hanging out and stuff and every so often you look over and it's just like 
Mickey Mouse with a sword scaling these like <laughs> giant pillars fighting Sephiroth. It's insane. It's the craziest game yeah. I've ever heard of. <laughs> <laughs> so what what made you guys relate to it so much then? I don't know if we related to it. I think we just really enjoyed it. <laughs> like if we're being honest, it had like cute Final Fantasy esque characters, which teenage girls love. There you go. So that was the big hook, and then it had <laughs> Disney, which is nostalgia, which is another big hook. So it was just right. a recipe for like little girls are gonna love this game like too much. <laughs> oh my god, what a nightmare! Yes, they got rid of these in the more recent one. Why? Wow, that'd be great. I know. They're like terrifying, but also amazing. Like this guy that screams. <laughs> See, Pretty especially creepy. in our Lord's year of 2020, that's exactly what we need. <laughs> yes, yeah, just this scared screaming cactus yeah. in our house. <laughs> just smacking just yourself in the head, in the head yeah. screaming. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Well, I guess we got the right two this time. <laughs> yeah. This is wonderful. I think this is us doing the podcast right now, actually. <laughs> Absolutely. I have to find the museum. Sorry, did you play uh, any of the Kingdom Hearts games? It sounds like, when you said, no. oh no, it sounds like you did, but... <laughs> no, I did not, but I know of them, and now I'm married to someone who has and does... <laughs> And so I get to learn it. So like, uh, yeah, she's she playing was Kingdom Hearts three girl on, at one uh, point. on the PS4. <laughs> yes, exactly. Playing Kingdom Hearts three, and I come down, and Goofy's like, "Oh, we got to shut the dark portal or whatever." Oh what yeah, what's going on? <laughs> playing Kingdom Hearts three when it comes out, like I don't even know, like ten years after the second one, like as a grown woman with like a job and a mortgage. <laughs> 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 My uh, my fiance walked in. He's like, "What the fuck are you watching?" And I was like, "It's a game, and I paid sixty dollars for it." <laughs> this is my life. Yeah, he's also seen like two Disney movies in his life, so the, it just compounds on how confusing this is. Yeah, I haven't seen that many either. So yeah, the, Her- the Hercules level and the Toy Story level looked fun, but just yeah, it's it goofy weird. and like dark Mickey. And yeah. I literally, when we got to the Frozen level, I was so. I don't know if annoyed or pissed off is the right word, but I was that. And I put it down for like three months just because <laughs> like, I'm not a huge fan of Frozen. I worked at a bar when it came out, so we had to listen Ooh. to Let It Go like three times Wait. every shift. What kind of bar plays Frozen? I don't know. It's a sports bar and they would just okay. play a mismatch of stuff. <laughs> and so then weird. karaoke night on every Thursday, somebody Ooh. would sing Let It Go. And I was just so tired. And then they started <laughs> singing it in the game and I just wanted to gouge my ears out. <laughs> well, if they didn't sing it in the game, people would riot. Oh, just, Goofy just singing <gasps> the lines <laughs> from it. <sighs> I didn't know Goofy sang it. I yes. gotta go. <laughs> Hold on. Let me let me find the exact line that he says because it <laughs> is um, the wind is howling like the swirling storm inside is the line that he sings. <laughs> <laughs> I hate Kingdom Hearts so much. I hate that I love it. <laughs> Amazing. It's, it's I, I feel like incredible. I need to go watch these cutscenes now. You, Goofy's thing, stuff like that. You should. <laughs> oh, bullshit like that. It's great. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Kingdom Hearts. I if I don't know. It's like it's like the Fast and Furious, but like on the opposite side, where it's just somebody came up with the craziest idea and they ran with it and it worked somehow, but nobody knows how or why. <laughs> yeah. It's just beautiful things coming together. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I would also love to see a Fast and Furious planet on Kingdom Hearts 4. So putting that out in the universe. That'd be amazing. My favorite Disney movie. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, I was just talking about a a Kingdom Hearts, but it would be sitcoms. (laughs) Like a Seinfeld level? (laughs) Yes, Seinfeld is what I brought up. And of course, Kramer's the bad guy. (laughs) Oh my God. Oh, I would lose my mind. Yes. (laughs) Uh, Oh my God. I can't stop picturing that. That's really good. Yeah, it'd be amazing. <laughs> wow. Uh, did you watch? Okay, we're go- we're gonna get off track. We're gonna go into like childhood stuff. What was the TV show of choice? <laughs> if you watch TV, I watched cartoons for probably um, a little bit too long, which is anime debatable because both. Mm. <laughs> I think so. Growing up, depending. Oh well, I guess what age are we talking about? Oh, I don't know. Around the time you're playing this, let's say. This, uh, I was probably still in like the recess era 
and like all the bomb ass 90s cartoons like hey arnold and <laughs> yes i didn't like doug i know it's sacrilegious it's just a okay uh, show doug was just annoying <laughs> and so was patty and like everybody in the show is annoying yes doug's like a grown-up caillou so oh my god yeah he is that's super yeah. accurate <laughs> 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 wow. So I could get why you wouldn't like him cuz yeah. yeah, he wasn't great. Yeah, that was that was a really good era of TV. Curse the Cowardly Dog was awesome. Uh I don't remember that one. Yeah, there's a lot of good stuff. Invader Zim was also out, but I was at the age where like it's it creeped me out. Yeah, which is interesting. Watched that recently, like past I would say like past 5 years, but Yeah, yeah. Yes. I, I will say though, in my defense, when the first episode that I watched of Invader Zim, he was crawling on the ceiling and his head rotates around 180 degrees. <laughs> and then I think the only other episode I saw was the meat vision. So I, I was just not <laughs> super into it. That's fair. Yeah. Yeah, there's some pretty crazy episodes on that show. Yeah. Was well, as, as I got older and like teenage years and stuff, it became much more funny. But I think as a God, when did this game come out? This came out in 2001. So I was nine. Yes. I literally aged myself, which is fine. So I was nine years old. Did not like Invader That's Zim. Fine. Loved Animal Crossing. Yeah. <laughs> when did Kingdom Hearts come out? The first one. I think it mm. came out, yeah, 2002. So not too far after that. Yeah, 10, that's the ripe age to just get these kids in there super <laughs> obsessed with the game. Absolutely. So yeah, you mentioned you were kind of a latchkey kid playing games. Oh, yeah. was, it, was it started with Animal Crossing? Technically, it started with Pokemon. With the Game Boy Advance was the first one I had. I didn't have a Game Boy Classic. Yeah, I had a Game Boy Advance with Pokemon and some Dexter's Lab game and... Ooh. Mario. Uh, it's one where you can switch between Mario or Luigi or Peach or I think Toad is the fourth one. That's like Mario 2, but for the Game Boy. I know which one you're talking about. Yeah, I used to play that a lot. My mom would actually steal my Game Boy Advance and <laughs> play through the levels. I get so pissed at her. I was like, I, I'm trying to get through the levels and she's gone like two worlds. I'm like, fuck mom <laughs> that's the only game that she was ever interested in she didn't care about like she wasn't against them she just was not interested except for mario she loved it <laughs> i guess yeah, that would be one of my questions because it's always is interesting especially people our age um parents relationship with games yeah and so your mom just played mario that was it yeah i mean my parents were super chill almost too much so <clears throat> in hindsight <laughs> oh, oh my gosh I don't remember if you get stung twice if something happens. We'll see. In the new games, you get pa or you just pass the fuck out if you get stung <laughs> twice without fixing your face. <laughs> nope, nothing happened. Thank God. Cool. Okay. Yeah. There's. <laughs> uh. Yeah. She. They were just fine. They were cool with it. They were like, so long as you're not doing drugs, it's whatever. Who cares? <laughs> yes, I'll just spend all day in my room and never yeah. leave playing this video game. <laughs> Yeah, they never really mind. That's good. Which is nice. Yeah, mine were pretty similar. I, I have four older brothers, but instead wow. of being like an only child and being left alone, it was because I had so many brothers that by the time they got to me, it was just like, do what you want. Mm -hmm. So that's how I ended up <laughs> playing games all day, every yeah. day. Yeah, my, my parents were just, they're busy with work. And I mean, I was a pretty good kid. I didn't get into trouble. So they didn't, I didn't mess with anything. They didn't mess with me kind of, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you just... It's like kind of like roommates. Yeah, yeah, we were chill roommates <laughs> <laughs> until I did something that was bad, and then I get right. in trouble or didn't eat all of my dinner or something. I don't know. <laughs> Is that a thing that happened? I don't remember ever getting in trouble for that. I just I like my fiance sitting next to me. He's gonna hear me tell this story again for like the twentieth time <laughs> in his life. But my, every Sunday, my parents would buy rotisserie chicken, like a whole chicken. Ooh. Uh, and we just we had to have rotisserie chicken every single Sunday, and I was like, "Hey guys, I'm not a super big fan of this. Like, it's dry, it's not that great. Like, we could eat something else." And they would keep getting it, so I just wouldn't eat it, and then I'd have to sit there till I finished all of my disgusting chicken. <laughs> and I, I liked chicken. I wasn't opposed to it. I just don't like rotisserie chicken. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I still don't. I <laughs> I'm not a big fan of it either, but other people are. And not, like yeah. my mom and now my wife's mom will buy it. Like, oh, I bought chicken. And I'd be like, oh, something interesting. And it's the rotisserie chicken. Like, oh, something like about how it, like the magic has worn off. We've circled back to rotisserie chicken again for the second <laughs> time. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. 
who knew it played such a big role in her life. Yeah, I think this trauma runs deeper than I thought. <laughs> yes, you should explore that. <laughs> Did you know that? Well, I guess no, you didn't. There's no way you would know this. But I worked at <laughs> I worked at a Costco for like a week. Oh, yeah. Did you get fired for stealing too many rotisserie chickens? No, I quit because we worked in the I worked in the food area and I, it was disgusting and I didn't want to do oh, it. Fair. It wasn't like the quality wasn't disgusting, but it's like it's hot dogs and pizza and that oh, alone was that disgusting area. to me. Got it. Yeah, oh, cheap hot dogs though. They're so good. Yeah, I to eat there. I don't think there's anything wrong. It was very clean. It's very well taken care of. But like, I don't want to smell pizza and hot dogs for eight hours a day. Ugh, I was like, well, I'm good. Speak for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Costco is probably hiring. You can probably check it out. It's true. <laughs> it's never too late to live your dream. No, I worked at Red Lobster, and so I know bad food smells to work oh. in. <laughs> oh no. But those better Cheddar Bay biscuits, unlimited. Mm. How long did you work in a food service? Uh, it's like six months before I went to university or like left oh, okay. the city to go to university. All me and my four brothers all worked at this Red Lobster at a different points in time. So it was mm. kind of a family tradition oh to work there before moving on. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, it was weird. That's pretty funny. I think I've been to Red Lobster like twice in my life. It was all right. Yeah, it's too. not bad. I just didn't go out of my way for it. <laughs> Those biscuits are very good, as everyone talks about. I keep destroying the flowers here, but that's okay. Yeah, what the hell's wrong with you? <laughs> you got a sprint. Oops. This right, is intentional, toes. though. <laughs> well, that one was. And it's, it's oh, Nook's house. No. I don't care. That's cruel. <laughs> Didn't you plant those at the beginning? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Oops. This lady does not like me. She's sassy. Right. That's her personality. I miss. I don't like it. I miss the mean characters. Did they take them out? They made them much nicer. No. Oh. Yeah, Monika is the first person I talked to. She's weird. I'm like, what the hell's going on here? Yeah. There Monika. is like a whole dissertation or something about making cozy games. And part of making a cozy game is that you have to have areas of it that are not cozy as well. Which for right. Animal Crossing, it's having rude neighbors or them getting into fights or Rossetti <laughs> screaming at you because your yes. GameCube died and is out of your control. Interesting. But in the newer ones, they, they kind of took it out and it's much like nicer and softer. And like I, I think the newer ones are better just because they've had so much time to refine it. But I do yeah. miss I do miss the little corners of a uh, sass. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. I mean, you already have your contrast. I did like as well in the older games, they they send you on a lot more errands than the new ones. Is that a good thing? Yeah, yeah, I think that's great. It gives you more like FaceTime with the, the neighbors. True. But in the newer ones, they're so um, typecasted, I guess. Like they're they're very much like if it's a peppy neighbor, they will all have the same peppy lines. And if it's a lazy right. neighbor, they all have the same lazy lines. Oh. I don't know. The older ones may have been like it, and I just don't remember it well enough. But the newer ones, it feels yeah. much more obvious. Hmm. I still enjoy it, but it's definitely something I've noticed because I've had three lazy neighbors in my town. And I love all of them, but <laughs> they all say the same exact thing about like bugs whispering to them at night which is interesting and <laughs> how dirty Weird. their house is <laughs> Ooh, it's a me did you tell him to say that or does he no, just do that's that just his, that's his thing oh my god that's incredible <laughs> i never had uh, alfonso as a neighbor oh, we're hitting all the hits today mm -hmm. shirt. That's oh that blocky. looks good it's perfect for the fall season yeah it's warm it's cozy <laughs> Hey folks, if you're enjoying this podcast, Bean to Media has another new podcast I think you'll love. It's called Do We Like, and I co-host it along with my partner, Robin. Robin, do you want to explain the show? Thanks, Eric. Hi, I'm Robin, co-host of Do We Like, a podcast where Eric and I debate common people, places, and things to decide if we like them or need to leave them. Join us each week as we debate controversial topics like pickles, underwear, bubble tea, and Queen Elizabeth I? Subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts or come find us at dewelike.com. All right, so getting back into the <laughs> through line. So I guess I, I'm i very bad at uh, introducing the podcast off the top. It usually takes about a half an hour to get there. Now we're here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so uh, basically the, the point of the podcast is to kind of look at a rough through line where gaming started for you and, and like how that related to your to your life at large and uh leading up to today so we went through animal crossing and you know, kingdom hearts mm -hmm. kind of what's 
what do you feel is after that? So you had some friends with Kingdom Hearts, mm-hmm. and did you grow up from that, or was it Kingdom Hearts? <laughs> no, the never. I just, I, it's buckles. the only game I actually played. <laughs> no, uh, <laughs> I think after that, I mean, I've, obviously I played games in between it, but these are like the big ones that yeah. stand out. Um, I think after that, the next game I got obsessed with was Skyrim. Ooh. I love Skyrim so much. I thought about putting Skyrim in, but I was like, oh. <laughs> It was really hard to pick, but yeah, I had played so much Skyrim over and over and over to get all these different quest lines, try all these different like races and stuff, and like, oh, I love it. I was actually <laughs> playing uh, Valhalla uh, before I checked my email and was like, hey, by the way, it's it's almost one. And I was like, oh, yeah, it is, isn't it? I've just been playing it for like four hours this morning. But it has, it, it's got, I mean, it's Nordic, it's cold, you run right. around, kill people, so it's skyrim enough to me. Yeah. It's so much fun. Have you been playing more RPGs then with the, like the creating your own characters and, and open worlds and that sort of thing? I think, I don't know. I play anything, honestly. I, I do really like open world, but sometimes if the game doesn't catch me enough, I just don't have the time nowadays to put in 100 plus hours into a game. I'm making it for Valhalla because I'm actually really enjoying it, but I don't know. It, it, it's been a while since I played an open world game that I really liked. Actually, I lied. That's not true. I just played uh, Genshin Impact and I put in a bunch of hours in that too. That was a lot of fun. I've heard of that. I don't think I actually looked it up though. It's like a Gachapon MMO RPG. It's, I don't know. The MMO right. part is a little weird with this one. It's not typical where it's like in WoW you run around and you see other people's characters and then you see like a shit ton of them in the city and stuff like that. Yeah. You can connect with a friend and then either you go to their game or they come to yours. It's a lot of fun. It's it's really fun to play. Like the controls are nice. You can glide around. It's a very Zelda Breath of the Wildy. I know mm. everybody compares everything to Breath of the Wild, but this does actually feel kind of like Breath of the Wild. <laughs> But I mean, I like I like everything. Like linear stories are fun. Um, <laughs> I didn't play Miles when it came out because we had been playing it so much at work. <laughs> but I watched right. my fiance play it, and he was having a blast. I hadn't played it from beginning to the end at work, but I knew everything that happened, just not the order that it came in. So it's really interesting. <laughs> yeah, that is interesting. I think we'll yeah. circle back to that towards the end. Um, yeah, sure. I definitely am curious about that stuff for sure. I've just been playing uh, the first Spider-Man or like the first PS4 mm-hmm. Spider-Man because I had it and then kind of forgot about it and then was like, I want to play a game and then played that. <laughs> yeah, this is like all my Steam like library. Three nights. Oh, that's awesome. Glad you like it. Yes, it's been very fun. Um, I didn't work on the first one, so you don't have to. <laughs> 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 no, it, it, like, yeah, I didn't because I played it for a while and then it didn't really catch me. The story wasn't really catching me, but then. Mm-hmm. Like I played it again, finally got to a part that caught me, and then like mm-hmm. went solid right to the end from there. Yeah, the the dream sequence is super cool. Or a, I don't know if it's a dream. I think he's on drugs or something. Right. He's talking to Otto. Yeah. Yes. So going back to the through line, you kind of marked on on the the survey I sent out the meeting people through games. Mm. Uh, I guess what <laughs> what is your experience with that? Wow, I can't believe I totally forgot this whole like saga in my life. I played a lot of WoW when I was growing up actually about the same time like whenever i I was getting consoles but then i was kind of shifting into pc Mm -hmm. world of warcraft was huge and i never like met anybody online because back in the 90s in like early 2000s talking to people online was the most dangerous thing you could do (laughs) yes of course (laughs) so i was too scared (laughs) to talk to strangers online because i was worried that they would like figure out where i lived and come kill me so i just kept it pretty quiet but i don't know i mean you still play with people and stuff like that but i was so socially anxious as a child i'm much better now but like i didn't want to talk to people online but it definitely let me talk to people in real life about it some more and like connect with people and stuff like that so that was really exciting and like I don't know. Since like the only things that I knew was from me running around, there was like opportunity for people to be like, "Oh, did you know about this guy? Like, if you go to the edge of the world and on this tree, there's this boss that you fight." I was like, "What? No, let's go do that!" And like, this cool. Yeah, that's cool. Kind of the yeah. sharing. The sharing of stories is always a, a classic. Yeah, video yeah. Game thing, especially before the multiplayer and online multiplayer. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, and like I'm sure they were out there, but I I wasn't a part of like any forums or anything like that for games. So like. Yeah. 
there was a lot of like you discover stuff through word of mouth like your friend found a thing and then you go find it kind of thing mm -hmm. that was really cool that era of like discovering stuff for yourself i feel like that's kind of gone away yeah with social media and with like the proliferation of information yeah, it's just so easy to find stuff. Yes, and how gamers like to be online. <laughs> yeah, and I'm the, I'm very guilty of it too. Like I don't have the patience to look for shit anymore. Like I was playing Valhalla and I looked around for like probably two minutes to try and find this hidden treasure. And I was like, oh, it's too hidden. Reddit, can you tell me where to go? And it's just I don't know what it is. It's no patience anymore. The yeah. loading screen's taking more than ten seconds. I'm pissed. <laughs> oh my gosh, yeah, I definitely do that to you or yeah i just don't have time for it i'm gonna busy adult with things to do i have to go to the <laughs> store multiple times a day so I <laughs> yeah i do have to go to the store later today yeah that's all oh, i do so busy to store. <laughs> so busy all these store trips oh you'd mentioned the the demo as a kid i also played demos constantly and yeah. over and over and over like demos were my jam because we didn't have a lot of money so i just find a demo and play that yeah yeah we didn't either yeah, absolutely. I'm pretty sure that I remember. I'm pretty sure you get them with like McDonald's Happy Meals. I can see that. Is that I, that might be right? And then you would play like Luigi's Mansion at the McDonald's on those big consoles with the little right. swingy yeah. you have controllers. Fancy McDonald's with the consoles. Yeah, <laughs> I, well, I, I would beg my mom like, please drive me to McDonald's, and she'd give me five <laughs> nuggies, and I wouldn't eat them, and I would just go play Luigi's <laughs> Mansion and swim around the ball pit. And she's like, please come eat these disgusting chicken nuggets. <laughs> <laughs> so that's. That's the type of story I'm looking for. It's <laughs> yeah, I totally forgot about that. I I don't know why I never asked my parents to get me Luigi's Mansion. And like, I'm pretty sure if I did ask my parents to buy me a game, they would have gotten me it. But I was just like, <laughs> I didn't have any money, so I assumed my parents didn't have any money either. <laughs> Well, that's a very thoughtful child of you, because I I think I did the opposite. Where like I don't have money, but you have all of it. <laughs> yeah, I just I don't know the logic behind it, because like they have a house and they have cars. Like, they, how do you think they got these? Like, I just didn't really <laughs> think it through. But I was like, yeah, I was like, I've got like two dollars to my name. That's not enough to buy Luigi's Mansion. So we would just go play the <laughs> Luigi Mansion demo over and over and over again. <laughs> just this frugal kid. <laughs> yeah, I'm still frugal to this day. I don't know what it is. I think it's in my blood. Flies out. Yeah. <laughs> you just gotta have them scream. Oh god, creepy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing here. I'm not very musically inclined. I, never I, I was just about part. to ask you that because I'm not either. No. I mean, you can't go wrong. E is the best <laughs> letter there is. Start my name. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we can't toss any M notes in there, unfortunately. No. Well, that's just a sick trap beat. Yeah, that rules. Um, Except, that was... yeah, it's okay. It's better than okay. <laughs> what? <laughs> Again. <laughs> <laughs> More E, please. <laughs> oh, you can scan, can scan a town to too. E reader. <laughs> I don't think I had that as a kid. <laughs> Oh, oh, maybe it did pop up. Yeah, I didn't do any of that stuff. No. Oh, no. Oh, what have you done? Okay. That's true. Yep. <laughs> I think you've got to buy letters <laughs> from the post office if you want to ship your fossils out. Uh, you had mentioned in the, in the, the email that I sent out, gaming getting you into... Oh, bye ball. <laughs> A new one will spawn. <laughs> gaming getting you into drawing. I feel like that would probably yeah. lead you to where you are now. Yeah, yeah. What's your art background there? Uh, so once once I started like actually making friends and becoming a human being that could have a conversation with other people, we would we would hang out after school and like everybody would just kind of play games together and stuff. Like we had a, like a group that was actually forming from it. Cool. And they they played a lot of Smash and like I played Smash Brothers too, but they were so much better than me that I would play like a couple rounds and be like, this isn't fun. I don't like getting my ass kicked over and over and over again. <laughs> so. And in my defense, I will say one of the friends that we played with became like a professional Smash player and like would oh. pay his rent with his winnings. So I'm going to say it's not because I was bad. It's because he was really, really good. And I hated yeah. playing against him. <laughs> So they would play like a ton of Smash. Like I'd play my four games or whatever, and they would keep playing for like hours. And I'd be like, I'll just draw while y'all do this. Like I don't mind watching. And so I just draw Smash characters. 
and like use it as reference and stuff or like any animes that i was watching super into full metal alchemist still am it's the best <laughs> draw a lot of that it was great lots of wolves and anime so <laughs> my art background is solid that is classic. Oh what? yeah, absolutely. What is, what is the draw to wolves? Because I, I don't I'm know. not saying this pointing to you out. It's because everyone draws wolves, and I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know either. There was a. I just remember in like first grade, I sat next to like the shelf of books, and one of them was like a book about wolves, and on the cover it was a wolf howling, and I would just draw that same stupid wolf over and over and over again until I thought it was right. I just thought they looked so cool. And I really like dogs. So I was like, wolves are like big dogs. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. I don't know. They're just cool. That's fair. I mean, yeah, they're cool yeah. animals. And... Yep, they're cool. <laughs> That's all you need to know. <laughs> yeah. Don't ask any further questions. I draw anime because anime is cool. <laughs> Uh, but this group that formed out of gaming then, I guess uh, Smash was the main one. I could see that. I feel mm -hmm. like that probably happened in my school as well. Um, was this like a, a changing group or did it have like the solid members and people would come and go? No, it was a pretty solid members. Like we were like the goth kids and like the gaming weird nerdy kids kind right. of thing. So not a lot of people were coming in and out of that. <laughs> we were in um in Keller, Texas. So, you know, this, this group stays there. <laughs> There, there was nothing to do, really. So playing video games or doing drugs or eating were the only thing. And we couldn't <laughs> afford either drugs or extra food. So we just play games. <laughs> Man, what a different life you would have had. That, right? Yeah. Kid. I could have been really good at drugs. I don't know. Oh, ate all the food. Yeah. It's my missed calling. Hey, there's still time. I can try. It. <laughs> true. <laughs> Not too late to change your profession. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of which, sick segue. Yeah, what the heck? That was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> how did you get to where you are now? So where where are you now and how did you get there? Okay. So the journey is a, is a little bit of a whirlwind, but right now, currently, I am a an associate character artist for Insomniac Games. We just shipped Miles Morales, uh, Ratchet & Clank is coming, and then other things that I can't <laughs> mention. <laughs> uh, so I, the journey started, like I just been, I've been doing art for ever, just casually, and like not really for a purpose or anything. It's just fun and I enjoy it. And then uh, when it was time to go to college, um, which my parents were like, you gotta. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, I guess so, huh? I went to community college and I was like, I don't really know what I want to do. It's like, I am really good at math, so I guess I'll do something like that and just make a lot of money, and I'm sure that'll make me happy. <laughs> so I went to, uh, I was in school for engineering, oh. and I was just like horribly depressed, and I didn't want to be in college, and I don't know, I, I was just gotten out of like a really shitty relationship and everything, and like it really would have been a great time to take a year off, but I didn't, mm -hmm. so I failed college for my first year I think I had like a 0 0.5 GPA which I didn't even know that once you go below one they would even give you a number but <laughs> yeah. they do <laughs> so I failed out of that and I was like maybe college isn't for me so then I enlisted in the Air Force and I was in basic training for a while and then I ended up getting really sick and I got put on medical leave so I got tossed back up to Dallas and I was like okay uh what the fuck do I do now and I was like I guess I'll just try school again because like the depression had just magically vanished and I never went to therapy which was a terrible idea if you have depression please go to therapy <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> or if you just don't Second feel well just go please find a therapist it would be yes. so much faster than this stupid journey I take <laughs> anyway so I, I go back to college and I start with like, I think I was doing computer engineering at first and then I tried electrical engineering and like, I was, I don't know, like I'm not trying to humble brag, I'm really not. I was, I was good at it, but it was just so fucking boring and I didn't yeah. care and like, uh, I don't know, I didn't no, connect I can, with I any totally of the kids. That. I was in engineering for three months because I was good at math in high school. Yeah, um, okay. And then going there is just like the most boring and uh, all the people kind of sucked, so, like engineering students. Yes. Uh, don't, don't listen to the next part. You suck. <laughs> Yeah, I, I I wasn't gonna say it, but I I agree. I like I would try so hard. Like I saw a guy, he had um, like anime stickers on his binder or Sweet. whatever his laptop or something. 
and they were talking about like a new episode of something or another and i was just like oh yeah you guys watch that and they just stared at me and i was like i hate my life like i think i'll just die instead how about that <laughs> I was like, never mind. I'm just not going to talk to anybody in college again. <laughs> and I just retreated back in. I was like, man, this sucks. I'm leaving. Um, the school that I was at was uh, an engineering school. I finished my associates of science first, and then I went to an actual university because it's cheaper to do uh, community college, pro tip. Mm -hmm. um, and then I went to university for the last two years to get my bachelor's. Um, that's whenever I made the transition from engineering to game school. So it was, an, it was an engineering school, and that's what they specialized in, like TI funded, like everything they do, and they're really renowned for it. Um, and they just happen to have a gaming program there, but it's not like a specialty or anything. Mm -hmm. But I had um, I had a scholarship or a grant or something like that. I can't remember where I had to be at a Texas public college and get my degree from there for that money to go towards it. So I couldn't go to like a game specific school. There wasn't really anything like that. So I was like, I'll just do this program. I was like, I don't know if it's going to work, but I'm miserable doing this engineering stuff. And like, I would rather do something I like. So I picked up ZBrush and Maya and stuff like that. And I was just, I just gave it a shot. And I honestly, most of it I learned from YouTube. The, the classes, it was mostly like taking just your basics and stuff like that or like art history or some shit that doesn't matter that right. you don't really yeah, learn yeah. <laughs> you don't really learn how to master your craft or anything so most of my learning i did from youtube and then i had um a professor who was a character artist and she she helped guide me her alone just having her as a resource was super super helpful mm -hmm. so but like getting a mentor and honestly just diving into it youtube videos were my track up <laughs> but yeah i did that um and i just like i did it full heartedly and like i really cared about it and i really enjoyed it and i i had an eye for it because i'd just been drawing for so long that it was it was coming pretty naturally to me and it, obviously there's stuff that i need to learn about the programs but like i don't know the artistic eye is the hardest part whenever you look at something and you're like that just doesn't look right why and answering the why is what makes you better and better yeah so yeah, I would just model for hours and hours and hours and like spend months on one character trying to make it as perfect as I could. And yeah, I put my portfolio out there and um, I started marketing myself on Twitter, if that's the way you would word it. But I would be mm -hmm. like, hey, I'm looking for a job. I'm graduating in six months. Here's my portfolio and like trying to post my stuff like when the algorithm would peak the most you know like the certain day or time and stuff like yeah. that and, like i was really trying to game the system here and i i honestly i do think that that helped because it got more eyes on my work which mm -hmm. means more people in the industry can see my portfolio but um i put that out there i was applying to so many places i I didn't get a single interview from anybody except for Insomniac. They were the only ones who wanted to give me even an interview, much hmm. less an art test or anything like that. Nobody wanted me. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, what do I do if I graduate and I don't have a job? I was like, fuck, <laughs> I've been in food industry for like seven years. I don't know what to do. Like, It took me almost a decade to graduate from college. I was like, if I don't get a job, I have literally no idea what I'm going to do. <laughs> so I just did my best. Yeah. But it, um, the role wasn't even for uh, character art. It was for uh, outsourcing to like help implement outsourcing stuff into the games and stuff. Oh. Um, so that's the job that I got. And then when I got there, it turns out that like that's what I was doing. But like half the time, and because we only have so many assets coming in, and the other half, they were like, well, why don't you make some stuff? And I was like, okay, I'll do that. I know how to do that. And it was just make some <laughs> small things here and there. And then be like, do you want to be a character artist? I was like, oh my God, yeah, I really do. <laughs> cool. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I just, I let them know. I was like, that's what I would like to do eventually. Like, this yeah. is not what I want to be as an outsourcing artist. And they're like, they just helped make it happen once they had a spot for me. Sweet. Yeah, so everything just kind of lined up really nicely. But I mean... It's a mix of working hard and right place, right time and doing all this extra stuff. Definitely. It's very cool. Oh, therapy would have made that like five years shorter though. <laughs> <laughs> Ideally, but oh well, everyone has their own journey. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I don't regret anything. I, I really like my job. I love my coworkers and stuff. So no regrets here. Mm -mm -mm. That was a lot of talking <laughs> all at once. <laughs> well, thank you for sharing the story. Yeah. Appreciate no. <laughs> <hearing it. laughs> 
Um, but yeah, that's very cool. What's it like? What's it like working at Sony? Because I'm, I'm more on the editorial side of the games industry. That's mm-hmm. kind of where my milieu is. My interactions are. What's it yeah. like working at that sort of game developer at that scale and, and all that? It's it's pretty interesting. I I talk to my friends about this every so often because like. I don't know. When I'm at work, I don't feel like I'm making a game. I feel like I'm just like on the computer. You know what I mean? Like I'm just doing a thing or like making a model. Right. But then I'll see it like in the engine or something like that every so often. I'll be like, oh shit, that's right. Like other people are going to see this and like <laughs> play it and move around it. And like the models that I make are supposed to move. And I was like, oh, this is weird. Okay. <laughs> But like, as talented as uh, as like me and my coworkers are, you know, it's a craft, and if you if you want to be in it and good at it, you practice your soft skills and your hard skills. And yeah, I don't know if it's my privilege talking or anything, but I really do feel like anybody can do it. Oh, definitely. It's just there's only so many people who can. <laughs> no, exactly. That's the thing. Yeah. Talk about this with other people in different fields, um, like voice actors and such, and kind of like making your own avenues and finding your own routes in. Um, and that's kind of what I've started to do with my video, working with the people that I've worked with. It's just like, you gotta, you gotta see where there's a gap. Yeah. And fill it. Absolutely. Like, yeah. I'm a pretty firm yeah. believer too. Like, if you make stuff that you like, other people will like it. Because there's, there's definitely like-minded people. We're, we're not that unique. Yes, <laughs> for better or worse, we're not that unique. So yeah, I think it's, I think it's like. a good thing. Find people who like the things you like. What's wrong with that? <laughs> Monique. <laughs> No, you play ball with me. Oh, yeah. she is. Oh, she's ran around Come a bit. Come on. She'll do it. There she goes. Oh, she's so cute. <laughs> Look at her go. <laughs> Where'd she go? <laughs> she's stuck behind the tree. I'm trying to Monique. Her. Monique. <laughs> Come <Play>. on. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> she just mouth farts at you. <laughs> But yeah, so you got from Animal Crossing to Kingdom Hearts to working on Spider-Man. Yeah, <laughs> it's so easy. Everybody can do it. <laughs> What's less about that? More about <laughs> we, can, we can start off weird and still end up in normal places. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It's, I mean, at, at the end of the day, it's just a job, you know? Yep. Like, as cool as it is, like, I, I don't feel like anybody should feel like it's impossible to get a job, you know what I mean? Or feel special for having a job. <laughs> True. That's how I feel. Some people, I don't know, I can tell it kind of gets to their head, especially once they get on some bigger titles, but you get paid to do a job. That's that's the crux of it. <laughs> it's not that fancy. <laughs> no, definitely. <laughs> Ooh, unless you're like in the CIA, that's really cool. <laughs> <laughs> yes, unless you're a super spy doing super spy yeah, stuff. Yeah, okay. Then you can brag a little. That's cool. <laughs> sure. But also you can't brag about it at all. Ooh, true that. Especially if you're a good spy. Yeah. Maybe that's why nobody's <laughs> told me. Yep. Everyone around you is a spy, but they just can't tell you. Yeah. They won't tell you. Don't destroy the flowers. <laughs> what? Can I, can I shake this tree until it dies? <laughs> no, I think it's too big. You have to get it when it's a little sapling. Yep. I destroyed the flowers. <laughs> yeah. Well, all righty. I think that about wraps it up for this one all along, but thank you for the chat. Yeah. Uh, do you have anything you want to promote? Oh, um... I don't know, man. All, all the work I do is at work, but uh, if, I've got my Twitter. If you guys like watching a, a person shit post all the time, that's about all I do. <laughs> Maybe twice well, a year I'll it. post a, an original piece of art, but don't count <laughs> on it. <laughs> but it's uh, at underscore M-L-K-T-E-A, milk tea, but without the I. Check it out. Check out Miles Morales. Yeah. Eric, this was so rad. Thank you so much for having oh, me. This was fun. So I like that. For... Wait, go back. Hold on. Oh, this God. is important. Yep. Go back a little more. Those are boobs. What? <laughs> nice. I guess so. <laughs> Uniboob. They look like more like a mask. Man, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, a like a bandu brow. The one little strap across. All right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of them all over the place now that you pointed yeah. it out. <laughs> Never unsee them. <laughs> Uh, oh, this one's a fidget spinner. Oh, yeah, it sure is. Either that or like the Bermuda Triangle in the middle is like the chaos. You can tell because of the way you are. Exactly. Yeah. Why? <laughs> Spinning circles. Yeah, that's the chaos. It's the magnetic fields doing it. Yep. 
I don't know. I don't <laughs> I know anything about the Bermuda Earhart. Triangle. <laughs> Me neither. Amelia Earhart got stuck there. Or was that just the rumor? <laughs> I don't know. I think that's the rumor. Well, we'll never know. Maybe you'll no. find out next time on the next yeah, episode. Yeah, find out next time. We're going to go to the Bermuda Triangle. <laughs> <laughs> My next guest is going to take us to the Bermuda Triangle. We'll yeah. see if we can find Amelia Earhart's plane. Dude, I'm stoked. I'm checking that out. <laughs> <laughs> Stay tuned, everyone. That's the biggest yeah. cliffhanger yet. For this <laughs> podcast about people's lives. <laughs> All right. Well, oh, thank yeah. you, Melissa, for being on the show. Thank you, Eric, for having it. a show to be on. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thanks everyone for listening or watching. Catch you next time on the Personal History of Games. Mm-hmm. Hasta luego. You can hear more of the Personal History of Games on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Play, or wherever else you listen to podcasts. If you enjoyed this episode and want to help us out, please leave us a rating and review. For updates, you can follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at PHOGpod, or check out our website at personalhog.com. The show is hosted and produced by Eric Canius, executive produced by Robin Lands. Do We Like is brought to you by Beamed Media, a Canadian podcast network. <laughs>